I remember once a quote when a guy said, it's amazing how articulate you are to the person who listens to you the most. And I really thought about that and I love that in every sense. The notion that your friends or your family or your best friend, the one who actually listens to you, that's the time when you are best at speaking and you are probably at your most open, perhaps at your most vulnerable. But that's such a gorgeous thought and it's a very human thought. Across the globe, we lose one man to suicide every minute, every day. So we're on a mission to inspire men to talk more, to listen, to support, and to be there for each other. A mandate means asking your mate out, checking in, letting him know you've got his back no matter what. If more men can be there for each other, maybe we can reduce the numbers reaching crisis point. We're exploring male conversations using the ALEC model that can help navigate a conversation with a friend who might not be doing so great. Ask, listen, encourage action, check in. When I used to be just in advertising, there was a, a perhaps a, an unfortunate era where many people would sort of conceive ad campaigns sat in somewhat of an ivory tower and it's complete nonsense. I used to teach people at my agency and there's no better way and no better start point to then try and do advertising and promotion and marketing for such a brand than being able to actually listen to the people who are there day to day talking about it. So we're the same here at Defected. I think anyone doing anything good in music has to start by listening and understanding what their community actually want, how, what they say, think, do, feel. Dance music, dance culture, it's, you know, its origins on any given week are actually the goosebumps that you get. The sweat inducing dance floor, that is dance culture at its best. You know, one of the quotes we live by, um, or I certainly live by, is, is, is by one of our artists, Honey Dijon, who says, dance floors unite people in a way that governments and religions can't. We try and convey some similar feeling of bringing people together, getting people to coalesce around content, getting people to understand things like story or origins or reason for being or why that music's appealing to them. All of these points, they sound like they could become clever marketing initiatives, but they're not. They're all based on us being humans. So as long as you do those things, as long as you ask people, as long as you listen and find out what they're feeling about it, as long as you engage them and, and have a two-way conversation, it will always be more fertile. The idea of like turning into different personas for different occasions is a thing. Like, I'm a bit of a social chameleon, I can blend into most places. And I think that comes from my eclecticness musically and socially. I went through all different types of groups of people because I'm so interested in people. I definitely find, within, especially within music, because when you go between genres and scenes, and I've been involved in so many music scenes, very organically as well, it's not like because they're hype, I just find myself involved in that music at that particular time because I love it. Ultimately, I, even when I feel like I might be veering towards a different version of myself, it's still me. I was a young MC, wanted to get involved in the garage scene, at a sort of the tail end of its success because I'm younger than most of my peers in Garage. They were all older than me. So even now, as I've sort of flown from the nest, so to speak, I would still have a tie there because it's my roots. It's kind of like your family where you've been brought up. And I had this interesting discussion with Creed. And what Creed said, which was interesting, is like, it goes like, you're like brothers and sisters. You all grow up together. Some of you might emigrate to Australia. As long as you come home for Christmas dinner, Yes, cool, do you know what I mean? And I was like, I'm definitely the guy that makes sure I go to Christmas dinner, do you know what I mean? Because, you know, even um, people, like I mentioned MC Creed, like this is the person that made me want to be an MC when I heard the click good rhymes. So if he asked me for something, I'm like, of course, man, how can I not do it for you? you? You inspired me. So yeah, the music can tie you in that way. I think I'm very aware about gratitude and people that are part of your journey in life in general and what they mean. I'm very sentimental, do you know what I mean? I'm, I'm an emotional hoarder, so I keep hold of things and people. You know, I've traveled to places I never thought I would have toured Australia, I've played in America, done all of Europe. And what's beautiful about that is, is meeting other people in those different places, especially like for me, because I do so much in like holiday destinations, whether it's like Bifa, Mallorca, or Greece, you make connections there. And like those people become your family away from your family. Again, they're people that you know, you don't just see randomly when you go there. I talk to them on a regular basis and check in on them, you know. Definitely pre-pandemic, 
and a bit of beforehand, I weren't recalibrating ever. And I think that's when I got into my worst bouts of depression and stuff because I wasn't, not necessarily grounding myself, but I wasn't going home, do you know what I mean? And finding what home was. So for me, like lately, especially, is, is football. Like I love football and I play football. When I, when I was a kid, I used to play football a lot. And, you know, and the, the guys I went to school with that are my friends who know Kevin, do you know what I mean? Who call me Kev, like I'm around a lot more now than I was when I was just on my grind because I didn't stop. Like we work in an industry where it's like every opportunity comes. If you f don't take it, you fear someone else will take it and your next part won't go. So you're constantly like worrying, I need to do this, I need to do this. So you never take any time for yourself. Whereas like I've made a conscious effort to go, right, I'm gonna make sure I'm here, I'm, I'm, I'm doing this. So yeah, like we ended up doing like a load of sort of like walking together and stuff. Cause that's what the pandemic, you know, we had so much time to do things. So we used to go on like 10K walks together, doing like fitness journeys and we played football three, four times a week, like turning it into a bit of a trilogy, like, you know, one game, one game, then the final. And it's just with your mates and that. And that really helped sort of recalibrate, as you said, which is a great word, and just sort of find Kev again, is what I've, what I've openly said to people. It's like, I feel like I've, I've, I've made a distinction and I can go home and go, that's that guy. And like, even when, before, it's really silly, before when I'd be putting my name into groups for football, it'd be like, Madge. But now I'm like, Kev, like, do you know what I mean? It's, it's a very strange thing, but it's very, um, I don't know, like, it's like a relief almost. When I get into bouts of depression, because that's what I suffer from, and I've got to a point in my life where I'm very capable of managing it now, whereas before it was difficult and I'd go into spirals of it badly for longer periods of time, whereas now I can recognise the signs. The problem is because I, when I get into that mindset, I don't want to see anyone. That's the hardest point. That is the, the hardest thing I always say to people is like, you don't want to do it. Like, I don't want to talk. Like, I, I don't know why I feel like this. Just leave me alone. Like, and I want to shut off from the world. That's what I'm like. So, you know, I think there was a point, oh God knows, it must have been a good few months ago now. But I think my missus must have messaged my mate who like, I was talking about going walking and said, come and take him out for a walk like I'm a dog. <laughs> but she said, yeah, come and take him for a walk. So he just turned up to my house and said, come on, we're going for a walk. So I was like, all right, cool. And then I went out and I did feel better for it. Even though I was like, I hadn't answered the phone and I was ignoring him kind of thing. He just rolled up and I was like, all right, cool. I, I do feel better for that. So yeah, do you know what I mean? That's the check-in. You know, that is a little, come on, I ain't seen you in a while. What's, what's going on? So you're on, just on that journey walking. So you just talk about everything. It's like therapy. Because you're delving in so many different layers of conversation and you get to a deep point. And I was telling him about something that happened in my life that he'd never, he never knew about. It's just understanding like sort of patterns of behavior really you know even like in say you were your friendship group right you're playing football and if it's someone that you know and they're like and they're normally there and they don't come you're like okay it's, well not like him not to come and then you see other patterns of behavior are you coming out no not when you start noticing things you know and i think even with my friends they with, with me because where i'm i can be in a place where i'm really upbeat and i'm the talker and i'm like come on you know let's i'm the motivator oh, if I stop become, if I stop being that, they they start worrying and going, oh, what's wrong? Do you know what? I I took stock the other week um, of some stuff because I was like, sometimes you get so lost in what you're doing, you don't even realise what the magnitude of it is that you're involved in. So uh, and I do Tyson Fury's ring walk music and like I sat there and like my voice is booming out of this arena, calling Wilder a dosser. Do you know what I mean? That same week I'd been on Nevermind the Buzzcocks, my record went gold in the UK, and I was just like, okay, wow, like, I was a 12 year old that bought decks and wanted to do this thing. I did it, like, I've done it, like, wow, you know? And all the hardships that have gone in between, it's just like, cool, yeah, I'm gonna take stock of that and, and show gratitude. Because that's the thing, like, we can all preach gratitude, but it's something that you genuinely have to practice. And, you know, it's only, that's the problem with, with us as human beings. It's only when things are taken away, we're grateful for it. Whether it's people, you know, our eyesight, our hearing, our freedoms, do you know what I mean? It's only when they're gone, we're like, thank God for that. And then like, again, because of how busy the world is and how everyone is, we revert to type and we go, oh, we're gonna be grateful. And then you're not, and everyone becomes an arsehole. <laughs> so, so I have to always try and get myself in that sort of vibe, you know? I think that's what sometimes some people lack is like empathy towards one another. I'm a massive empath. And if you, if you lack that as a trait, you don't understand other people. And that's why we can get into the scenario where, oh, just get on with it. 
You know, the whole idea of get on with it, man up, sort yourself out, you know, is something that was ingrained in us. And I think, you know, someone like Tyson, because of what he represents, it's, it's so big that he talks about it. And it's why I explain to people why it's so important that he's so honest about it is because not only is he six foot nine, heavyweight champion in the world, he's a traveler. Do you know what I mean? Like, you know, he comes from a, a traditional traveler background. He is everything that is supposed to be like m male and macho. A whole male psyche is under the microscope, you know? And the, the idea of toxic masculinity, which there is, which exists, and something that is not good, and we don't want it to be a part of it. So this is why it's so important to have open and honest conversations, because they are the conversations that will literally save lives. People will be able to just come out and say something and not feel judged or get battered for it, do you know what I'm saying? And that's why Tyson, who has had his fair share of saying some mad stuff over the years, has gone through this full cycle of going to the bottom, of rising up now, and people can see that and, 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 and take great comfort in that. And I, think, and I think looking at someone like him going, oh, well, as he always says, if I can do it, you can. Me, myself, personally, just because of the position I'm in, with, with a platform at least, I always acknowledge that. And even when I speak out on, on social platforms and I've been very honest about my own personal journeys, the people, my DMs, someone goes, mate, I've, I've, I've had the exact same thing, I feel the same. I, I don't feel alone now that you've said something. And it's interesting that people look at anyone who's in some kind of platform or a spotlight as, you know, somebody with, oh, you're there. So, because you've said it, it means something rather than me. And I'm like, no, but your opinion is as valid as mine. That's why it's important to bring that and have those conversations, you know, have those really hard and honest conversations. It's like talk and educate one another on stuff. Because as long as you're open to be educated, you're always going to learn. And I think that across the, the message of, you know, we need to talk more on mental health, it needs to coincide with this. We need to openly and honestly talk about everything without everyone getting triggered.